the usual complaint about showing off is that you don't actually have the characteristic you're trying to show. So say for virtue signaling or brag, you know, we're bragging about how smart you are or bragging about how loyal you are. So for one thing, it, it say like this is not as fringe as it was. I mean, for one thing, things have changed. Um, certainly in, you know, as you know, I mentioned, 2013 is when I first heard of a microaggression. Uh, um, the, the, the famous opera about that is the Macropolis case by Yamachek, um, and where Elena Macropolis has uh, lived for, I think it's three or four hundred years, and seen everything and done everything, and life is absolutely tedious. And that's only three hundred years, that's not forever. <laughs> I mean, we've, we've already seen that happen um, over the past uh, five or six years. We've seen a number of charities emerge that um, use cryptocurrencies to cut out all of the overhead of international cross-border transactions and financing through intermediaries. In um, heterosexual young women's friendships, that one of the one of the underlying roots of their rivalry and feelings of competition is this this is rooted in discrepancies or competition over physical attractiveness. And even if they don't have such a high fraternal, you know, certainty, it might still be worth the investment because, you know, it, it might be relatively cheap in many species and only a investment in an ejaculate and a bit of time is required. Certainly the original, he said that the original motivation for Moral Foundation was, was, to, sort of, was dis to distinguish between liberals and conservatives or, or more specifically argue that liberals didn't have a monopoly on morality and there were some things that conservatives considered moral that that, um, that liberals didn't value as much. Uh, it's very, very hard to think of anything much that isn't uh, heritable. I mean, I, um, uh, any uh, animal breeder uh, will tell you that. I mean, uh, animals, of course, have traits and, uh, that they're something like uh, they can be classified as personality traits. And that is, we all have to know this because science is our best means of discovering what the world is really like, what really exists, um, and, and, and how it exists. Well, um, it is a prediction to say that we'll never under, science will never understand it. And it's some of the most scientifically naive people, like Colin McGinn, who said that. And it's inevitable that we look out the windows I'm doing now, oh, yeah, those trees and flowers and stuff out there. We can't escape that obvious fact. Fact in the sense that our subjective uh, experience is telling us every moment of every day, that's what's happening. We're, experiencing the real world based on our sensory apparatus, but the reality is it's not happening. If I, if I accept the rebranding of some modalities as integrative and alternative, then like, you know, exercise, diet, yoga, you know, fine. You know, there's, uh, unless you have a physical condition where you could hurt yourself doing yoga, I don't, you know, what's the, there, I don't think there's any harm in it, right? E ele dizia isso muito sério mesmo. Ele ficava bravo quando chamavam ele de otimista. Ele falava, não é que eu sou otimista, eu estou apenas analisando os fatos. E os fatos mostram que houve progresso uh, na, em relação à saúde, em relação à demografia. Está havendo progresso, eu não estou tentando falar que o mundo está bonito. 